Welcome to Earth Revolution. I am your host, Susan Shan. Thanks for being with us once again. I am here with Cassie Johnson, who is the Director of Food Security Partners of Middle Tennessee. That's an uh, organization right here in, in Nashville. Thanks, Cassie. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Um, and if you would, tell us a little bit about what, what does food security mean sure. in the context of your organization? Sure. Well, you know, I think it's uh, we think of it as a pretty intuitive concept, and that is that all people uh, should be able to access healthy, affordable food that's grown in a way that protects the planet, uh, protects family farmers, and, and helps communities thrive. And, uh, you know, we believe that all people should, you know, regardless of race, income, age, neighborhood, right. you know, should have that right. Yeah, should have access to healthy food. Mm -hmm. Um, and tell me a little bit about the programs that you're involved with. I think you told me you have two primary pro programs that you're, that you're mm -hmm. working on right now. Can you tell us what those are? Sure. Well, we engaged uh, more than 300 people plus our advisory council um, over uh, a few month period in, in identifying their ideas for creating a more healthy, just, and sustainable food system for Middle Tennessee. That's our mission. Okay. And um, we created 33 program and policy priorities, and out of those, like you said, we've chosen two uh, to tackle. Wow. Uh, first. How do you narrow it down? <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's hard. Yeah, um, but our uh, first initiative is called Growing Healthy Kids. Okay. And uh, the aim of that program is to couple on the ground. Um, initiatives like school gardens or farm to snack programs right. or uh, field trips to farms uh, to learn about the food system okay. with also helping uh, parents and teachers learn how to advocate uh, for a healthier school food environment which again right. we, we consider to be all of those kinds of things as well as the food that's served in the, the school cafeteria okay. but really to build the capacity in our community for you know, being able to, to, to take on those kinds of programs. Okay, so that has a couple of components. It's mm -hmm. to educate the kids. It's mm -hmm. to give them hands-on experience with a garden mm -hmm. or visiting a farm and seeing how it operates. It's to educate the parents mm -hmm. as well as the teachers mm -hmm. in how to provide that information. Mm -hmm. And it's also uh, making sure that their lunches are healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that a big component of what you do before we talk about your second program is also uh, working with local farmers, mm -hmm. uh, community-supported agriculture, and and getting that food uh, into schools, into mm -hmm. communities, that's a big priority for your organization as well? Yeah, I mean, we definitely see, uh, we call it farm to institution. So, um, you know, getting farm fresh foods into hospitals, clinics, schools um, as a, a number one priority, but also a really difficult uh, priority because, right. you know, number one, there, there isn't uh, a great supply of locally grown food. It's in high demand. Um, just not a lot of farms out there. Not not enough farms. Not enough. Just, yeah, yeah, I would say. And then also, just you know, there are a lot of pieces about our distribution system and a uh, food distribution system, you know, um, across the nation that make those kinds of relationships difficult. So, you know, one of the aims of the Growing Healthy Kids program is just to begin people getting people excited and thinking about things like school gardens and getting you know kids to eat farm fresh foods and. And right. as we also work on the other side of the equation to, to begin thinking about what we need uh, to get farmers um, sort of working cooperatively, being able to meet uh, larger institutional scale kinds of right. orders. Right, right, right. Um, okay, now tell me what is the second program that you're working on? The first mm -hmm. one is the, edu the food, mm -hmm. food to, what growing, was the first one called? Growing, growing Healthy, healthy Kids. kids. Yeah. And what is the second one? Our second program, they both have kind of cute names, is uh, Restoring Nashville. And uh, this is an effort really to, to literally bring healthy food retail options back into Nashville's food desert neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah, food so deserts. Food <laughs> deserts, yeah. goodness. That sounds pretty uh, ominous. Mm -hmm. So restoring is kind of a play on words because mm -hmm. it's actually about creating uh, stores, you know, retail outlets for healthier food in mm -hmm. Uh, what, low-income neighborhoods or neighborhoods that don't mm -hmm. presently have access to those? Is yeah, that right? absolutely. We uh, did some food mapping actually last year where we found that in five Nashville neighborhoods, low-income neighborhoods, you are ten times more likely to see tobacco than a tomato in the local convenience stores. Wow, and, and that makes it so hard for families to, mm -hmm. to get that food. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. When there's healthy food in, in your neighborhood, people will we'll purchase it and prepare it, but uh, if, if you know, neighborhoods have an abundance of convenience stores and fast food restaurants, that's, that's what people will eat, sort of. Yeah. 
So it has to be convenient for people because everybody's mm -hmm. so busy. When mm -hmm. you when you've got a, a maybe a, a, a family where both parents are working and they just don't have time to mm -hmm. go real far to a farmer's market or whatever, and then so they go to the local store. And if that produce isn't available, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to provide it for their kids or themselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so many families uh, also don't have cars. They don't have private private right. transportation. So. Right. Right. Um, well, how do you make that happen? If you're trying to um, get these stores into communities, do you, uh, you know, bring uh, businesses and members from the community together? Do you host meetings, uh, mm -hmm. workshops, you know, and ways in which they can uh, sort of connect with one another and determine if it's going to be profitable for the business to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to build a store there or open a store there? How do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our process uh, is really about doing some preliminary research. Um, and then, uh, you know, identifying who needs to be a part of the discussion. Uh, we anticipate mm -hmm. building an advisory council that will guide the process and uh, making a set of recommendations, you know, about what these incentives that might look like that we would offer, you know, to supermarkets locating in uh, underserved neighborhoods. And other cities um, across the country in uh, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, have been very successful in building pri public-private partnerships um, that help supermarkets take that leap into a neighborhood that may um, seem kind of risky, um, but in the end, these markets have been very profitable. Right. So you've got good models in other mm -hmm. states that are maybe more on the cutting edge, a little more progressive mm -hmm. uh, with their food, you know, farm mm -hmm. food availability programs mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, now, what is it that you guys do uh, within the community in terms of activities locally that people might want to know about? Uh, do you have any events coming up that people uh, could be part of? Or you mentioned recently a summit where you brought 300 people together. Was that mm -hmm. open to the public? What was that about? Absolutely. That was in uh, the spring of 2008. And uh, we plan to do that every two to three years, but we will be having an annual meeting um, in January. Okay. And is that going to be held to here? It in will. Okay. We have a partner meeting every other month. Those are open to the public. Right. Uh, our next meeting is November 21st, and okay. people can learn about that at foodsecuritypartners.org. But we'll be looking at uh, planning and civic design and how we can use those as tools to promote food security good, in good, urban good. areas. So okay. it'll be pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, I would like to attend that meeting myself. Mm -hmm. um, you're also going to be part of the upcoming Summit for Sustainable Tennessee held mm -hmm. at Lipscomb University, and um, that's going to be November 13th, 14th, and 15th, and I think you're going to be involved in one workshop or program there as well, mm -hmm, yeah. talking about these issues. Yeah, we'll be talking about the link between environmental justice and food justice, uh, specifically yeah. with a um, gentleman who's done really great work in Los Angeles, Robert Gottlieb. So, oh, yeah, and is mm -hmm. he an author as well? No, but he... He is an author. Um, I've heard his name before, yeah. Yeah, he's at the uh, Occidental Center for Food and Justice in, in Los in Angeles. LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, and I just want to say once again, folks, I'm here with Cassie mm -hmm. Johnson, Food Security Partners. You can check them out at, on the web at foodsecuritypartners.org. We've just got a little bit of time left. Is there any final thought you want to leave our viewers with before we go? Sure. I, I think a good take-home message is that food is an environmental issue, and it's really a top environmental issue. Yeah. Uh, people are concerned about climate change right now. They're looking for things that they can do in their homes. And um, by some estimates, the, the food system, food transportation, food production, food processing accounts for um, you know, 35, 40 percent of human uh, greenhouse gas emissions and is the, the second leading source of fossil fuel consumption next to vehicles. So, wow. you know, food is a leverage point for, for environmental for reducing, change. Yeah, mm -hmm. reducing carbon yeah. by using, yeah, that's mm -hmm. an important point. Um, and we're talking about transport, we're talking about mm -hmm. the way it's produced, we're talking about uh, the kinds of fertilizers used. That's amazing. All right, um, folks, we're out of time. This is Earth Revolution. I'm your host, Susan Shan. I've been here talking to Cassie Johnson. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Peace, love, and recycling.